Hello everyone and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos. And today we're going to be going over stormwater chambers, we're going to be explaining their purposes in terms of how they're involved in the stormwater design process, what their uses are, and some of the advantages of using stormwater chamber designs and elements when it comes to modeling and building out an engineering project. So that's what we're going to explore here in this video. So what are stormwater vaults? They're used to detain and manage excess stormwater generated from a project site. So unlike something like an above ground detention pond or bioretention that we talked about, we talked about detention ponds earlier, stormwater vaults or chambers are actually stored underground so that we can manage this excess stormwater that comes off of our site, generated from various surfaces, and then we can actually store this underground and make the best use of our project site and space. So it is becoming more common for stormwater designers to divert excess runoff to underground solutions. And there's a variety, there's quite a few underground solutions. And this removes the burden of placing storage above ground and limiting precious project area that is intended for development. Because if you have a developer and they're trying to do, develop this project area, put houses there, commercial buildings, whatever they are trying to do, for every acre of area that you have to take up with stormwater detention facilities, that's just another portion of their project that goes to cost of building that detention facility and not selling whatever that land is intended for or not using it for whatever the intention is. So if you can store that stormwater underground using vault and chamber elements, then you can end up saving money or being able to utilize more of that project area space. So you can see a storm capture element on the left here where it's actually able to store stormwater efficiently and then outlet it downstream. Stormwater facilities such as ponds and trenches take up considerable amounts of space on the surface of a project area. So trenches, trapezoidal ponds, detention ponds, bioretention facilities, all these are going to be built above ground. And yes, they do take up quite a bit of space, but they're still those facilities are still very useful. But a lot of the times in high density urban areas, people will opt for stormwater vaults. And that's what we're going to explain here. So what are some of the advantages of stormwater vaults, chambers, or underground facilities? Well, the implementation of stormwater vaults will significantly reduce stormwater runoff and flow. Obviously, it's a mitigation method. Vaults are also excellent for high density urban areas, as I discussed before, where there's limited space, a regular site shapes, or very expensive land. If you have very, very expensive land that you're developing and you need to make the best use of it, then maybe putting in a giant above ground detention facility is not going to be the best of use. Units are highly sustainable and will last upwards of 50 years. Because they're placed underground, they're built with high quality materials, they can, can last a very long time. You can also get increased public safety when compared to detention ponds or above ground facilities because the public's not going to be able to view them since they are underground. So some more advantages include installation can be quick as models can be pre-constructed and placed underground so you can build these things off-site, bring them in on-site, and then build them there. They're also insulated from freezing due to their underground placement, so it's going to be able to keep the water from freezing, causing issues in the stormwater system. It's also effective storage for slow release runoff, so you can slowly release the water back into the natural environment, prevent flooding, erosive flows, and these systems are out of sight of the public, making the project site more aesthetically pleasing. So the public's not going to see a detention facility, they're not going to see where the stormwater is being stored because it's all underground, so that's one advantage to using something like a stormwater vault. But we need to inspect these facilities, so the inspection of underground facilities are often required upon installation. So consistent maintenance is important for the proper function of that stormwater facility. So these things are going to include periodic inspections. So either the company that installed them, the local regulating uh, or jurisdiction will have to come by and inspect these facilities, make sure that they're operating properly and how they were designed. There's also going to be, need to be some constant maintenance and removal of debris. It's inevitable large debris is going to end up in whatever stormwater facility that you're using. So you're going to need to go in, clean out and maintenance this large debris and make sure the facility is operating properly. Structural repair as well. Sometimes the facilities will break down. There will be issues that will come by because of various stormwater events or other uh, catastrophes that happen. And these uh, facilities will have to be repaired and also sweeping and cleaning. So they're going to have to be cleaned out of debris, um, you know, natural environments, anything that ends up in these stormwater systems are going to have to be swept and cleaned to make sure they're functioning properly because area is being taken up by other things and not the stormwater chamber facility. It's not going to function properly. Infiltration can even be enabled from these facilities and allow water to return to the natural environment in a variety of ways. So if you're able to infiltrate on your project site and infiltrate that water back into the natural environment, these facilities also allow for that. So it's not just detention ponds or bioretention facilities that are trenches where we can then 
infiltrate the water. You can also do these with a lot of these underground chamber and vault facilities. So what are some of the modeling methodologies that we see used for these chambers? Well, there's single event methods, which model stormwater facilities based on a select storm event and volume. And release rates are not as important when it comes to single event uh, hydrology. It's not gonna be looking for that as much. And storm events assume the same flood return period. With continuous simulation, we're, using, we're modeling facility to account for the entire hydrologic cycle. Facility release rate is designed to meet a flow duration criteria to prevent erosive flows and flooding. We have tons of videos on continuous simulation if you want to check those out on our YouTube channel. So what is a chamber modeling situation in something like WWHM 2012? Well, pre-developed project land use is input into the WWHM 2012 model to generate runoff and flow results. And then that developed land use is input into the model. So we're looking at the project before we develop it. And then after we're inputting the NRCS runoff land use and a chamber element has been selected to mitigate the runoff and release. So we're using a chamber element here to mitigate that additional runoff and manage it. And then WWHM 2012 actually auto sizes facility to meet their local jurisdiction stormwater requirements in the most efficient manner. So that's what's being performed here. So it has an algorithm that actually auto sizes your facility to give you the smallest, most efficient facility design. A facility has been generated with a row length of 200 feet. It has 535 chambers with 40 end caps and different stone depths of 12 and 9 inches on the top and bottom. And you can see we can also enable infiltration as well. So we use the chamber model S, uh, at HS180. These are Princeco Hydro Store chambers for this example. And WHM 2012 was able to actually model these facilities and use it to mitigate our storm stormwater runoff. So that's an example of what it could look like in a continuous simulation situation. Based on an article, that the market value of stormwater chamber business is now $195 million and growing with projections showing much growth. So a lot of people and a lot of jurisdictions are utilizing these designs because of the various advantages I went over. So should we use stormwater chambers? Well, they provide high volumes of stormwater detention or reducing the cost by not occupying surface land and facilities can be pre-constructed and quickly installed on site. So there is some definite advantages there. But some disadvantages include underground chambers make it more difficult to achieve some water quality standards because we're not using different soil mixtures that we see in bioretention facilities. And above ground facilities such as bioretention allow for greater filtration and safer discharge downstream. So really you need to pay attention to what your project constraints are, what you should be using and see if stormwater chambers are for you. So that's an overview of stormwater chamber elements. I hope this was useful. We have a free guide called the Ult Ultimate Hydrology Guide which you can find in the description down below, which gives you an overview of the many different kinds of hydrology used and a quick overview of single event, continuous simulation, if you'd like to learn about that. These are some of the references that we utilize. If you have any questions, leave it in a comment down below. And anyways, we'll see you guys next time.